In this video, we're going to focus on how we can change the scale here on a week. You can see here this based on a single week, but we make sure that we show the starting date of that week and the ending date of that week, and we keep on going nicely. So let's explore how we can show the end, the starting and the ending date of the week. First thing what I want to do here is of course get a boiler template and a boiler template you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. This link you can find as well in the description box. Once you're on here, copy this chunk of code so you're good to go. Next, you want to support my channel and get the source code of this video and of many of my other videos, check out my Patreon page here where you can support my channel. All right, let's start to work on creating the item. First thing what I want to do here is basically I need to add up here. We have here only the chart.js library, but I need to have the date adapter so we can convert these items into dates. To do this, I go to chart.js.org. Once in here, I'm going to click on ecosystem and I'm going to get the date adapter. I'm going to scroll down here. You can see here the awesome chart.js title and then we have here the adapters. Select this and then you can see here all the date adapters that are available. And I'm going to use this one here. This requires only one uh, file, a JavaScript file to load. So I will just do this one. There are others that you can use. Just look and follow their instructions as well. But this one is easy. Just grab this single link here, which is the bundle.min.js, which is the charges adapter date, FNS. All right, once we have that, I'm going to just paste it down here like that. And you can see we have this one here. Why? We need to load the chart.js library first before we load the date adapter because this is dependent on the chart.js library. Once we did that, we go back here, refresh. It might take a second to load because it's a new file that needs to load as well. So once we have this, we're good to go. And what I want to do now is I want to make sure that this has now a X scale and the X scale will have a uh, structure of time. So I'm going to convert this into a time scale. So first of all, I'm going to say type. What's the type of scale I use? Which is a string value and I say time. By doing that, we're now allowed to use the time object. And the time object is basically from the adapter, the date adapter. So now what I want to do here is I'm going to say a unit and the unit specifically will be a week. I want to see the week data. If I refresh here, the data is not showing, of course, because we don't have the structure here of the labels correctly. So it's looking for them. So let's put in some values in here. I'm going to put in 2023, 0101, and then we can just copy this, maybe put in four or five different values on a weekly basis here, or even whatever you want. So let's say this one will be on eight. This will be, I'll just make some random. This will be 30, and we get some February as well. February 10, and maybe another one, February 28. All right, so we have six values here. Save this, refresh. As you can see here, it is now spreading all over and it's not exactly the same here on these grid lines. The reason why is because we give it a date value that is different. As you can see here, it's not exactly the item. So this, this is probably more appropriate for a line chart, but for now, this is just a sample. And we're going to focus on this value here because look at this here. We would like to see here maybe the starting and ending date of that one. I mean, 1 Jan, January 2, 7 January, and then here 8 January till 14 January, and etc. etc. How do we do this? I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to play around here with the X scale. And in the X scale here, I'm going to say a comma, I'm going to say a ticks. And then within the ticks here, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a callback functionality because I want to change something. So for this, I'm going to say here we have a, well, we have two time parentheses because we have a value, we have the index number and we have the ticks. And then we go put in here a function error expression and there we are. So now we have this. What I want to do here now is right now just show you these values here. So you're understanding what we have in the callback. Let's put in the value, save, refresh, open up developer tab and you can see here right now the grids has disappeared. The reason why it disappeared is because we didn't return a value. So right now it assumes we don't need to draw anything. But as you can see here, we get all of these um, milliseconds of a specific day. Every day has its own specific milliseconds and probably it's also on the time zone and anything more specific. So I don't know exactly, well, you can see here, I do know, I guess it's 12 midnight, probably in my local time zone. 
So you have to just check on that, how that works, but that's all right. We're going to work now on this and we're going to show now only the values on the weekly from starting and ending. So we have this one here. The index is probably common or self-explanatory, so I don't need to show that one, but the ticks might be very useful. As you can see here, we get a lot of ticks, but the ticks are showing a length of null while we have values. The reason why it shows this is because we didn't return anything. So I'm going to just return value, save that, refresh, and remove this comma here. Save that, refresh, there we are. Now we get all of these values you can see here that we're returning. The value, the major, if it's a major, yes or no, and the label. In this case, the label is not being converted into the specific date. So that's what we're going to do here now. What I want to do is basically this. I want to return this value, whatever the current value is, converted into the date. So this was January 1, so it should, show, it should show January 1, but the ending date is missing for that week. So I'm going to show that as well. So how do we do this? I'm going to say here, first of all, I'm going to see here constant, and let's give this uh, our date, or let's do a return of the specific date. For that, what I need to do here, I'm going to here use a bracket, and then I'm going to use here uh, template literals, which is backtick, backtick. Why? Because I'm going to use values and string values all together for easy concatenation. Template literals is phenomenal. First thing what I want to do is I want to get the date that we have here. This is the exact date or the value in milliseconds of January 1 or whatever it is. So I'm going to say here dollar sign, new date, because I'm going to get that value which is the value here. I'm going to make that a date object. And then we're going to say here to local date string. And then I'm going to put in the structure here, comma, English US. And of course you could change this to, if you have European time or any kind of time that you have other structure, this could be done as well. Then I'm going to say here comma. And then we're going to put in here this option here. And in here now, this is basically an object where we can specify more specifically how do we want to present our item. And what I want to say here is I want to have the month, let's say here, in a short structure. So it's only two digits. And we can say here the day as well that I want to have. And that will be a numeric value. And it's numeric without the B. So if I save this, refresh, all right, we get a slight error here. Let me double check what's going on here. We have a comma, you have this, that, hold on. All right, I just quickly check my mistake. As you can see here, the mistake is I have here data string. That's my bad, it should be date. I'm working with very often with data the term, that's why I mistakenly typed it without being aware of it. So make sure you have a date string because it's about date here. Once we have this, it starts to work, but you can see it's exactly the same. Basically, there's no difference, but somehow there is a slight difference because we can specify this. You could make this long as well if you do this. You can put it full here. You can even put the year in here as well. We could say here year, and then uh, year could be a numeric as well. Save that, refresh, and there we are. All right. Of course, I don't want this. What I'm going to do here now is it's going to put it back on short. And short is not a shirt. All right, what I want to do is, and then I want to have a dash ending item. So how do I do this? Well, all we have to do here is after this structure here, I just have to add up something more because we have this here, and this is like an array value. We can put in here comma, and then what we can do here is create another item. And I can say here again, back tick, back tick. And all we're going to do here is copy this, everything between the back tick put in here. But here, now, this value will be different. But if I just save this right now, refresh, you can see here we got this. All right. But now what I want to do here is, and somehow it's together, we can combine this maybe by uh, putting here this comma, maybe remove this, but I'll play around later on. Let's get the end value here. So how do we get here the end value? So what I'm going to do is constant and just say here a 
end value or end date of that week. And the end, end date of the week will be whatever our value is plus six times the milliseconds of a single day. So how many milliseconds does a day have? Eight, six, four, zero, zero, and then again, zero, zero, zero. So if you have a hard time to watch this, I'll just put this like underscore. This is allowed as well. So this here basically says plus six days. Doing this, we can get here the exact value that is ahead of it. You can put it in here. If I save this, refresh, now you can see here one till seven, eight till 14, etc., etc. So this starts to work. Of course, why is it here? I guess because we have an array here. Now you can just remove this, what I can do here even, I guess this could be even removed. We don't even need this. I'm going to show you another way to do this. We're still in here and then because we have these template literals, we can put in here a dash. So we have a dash, if I save this, we should have here now everything on a full line. There you are and you can see this looks nice. We have a starting and ending. You can even change this and we have numeric and short. Uh, I guess this could even be a numeric as well. There we are. Let's put them all in a numeric format. We get here simple numeric formats that looks beautiful.